In the hands of firstly Mike Halewood and then Jim Redman, Honda had won the previous three 250cc World Championships. But the new RD56 was about to place itself in the record books. It's a, a twin cylinder, two stroke, air cooled disc valve, you know, with actually forced uh, uh, lubrication, which was really sensational. I think it had six or seven gears, I can't remember, but it had a lot of gears. And I was only ever used to having four. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was brilliant and it, it had sort of uh, a bit more acceleration and, and than the, uh, the Honda. Then we went to the Dutch TT at Assen and uh, Jim and I had this fantastic battle and we finished within six inches with him just again in the edge. The battle for the 250cc world crown would continue at the Belgian Grand Prix at Spa. But it was Reed's teammate, Mike Duff, who would take the chequered flag. I was in the lead um, at Frankersham and it sees going through the Master S, which um, caused Jim a bit of a, a bit of a scare. So much so that he had to move the bike so quickly and back again, we're doing like 130 miles an hour. And, and he ran on the grass and was just clipping the telephone poles, tick, tick, tick. And, and Mike Duff won the race and, and Jim was very, very pleased to be second. <laughs> With five rounds to go, things would change dramatically for Reed. Uh, and then, actually, I mean, the, the team left and I was on my own with, with two mechanics and the two machines. And we went to East German, Checo, and Finland, and Ulster, and I won them. And it was down to um, the last Grand Prix at Monza in Europe. And if I won there, uh, I was world champion. It was the first championship for Yamaha. With Yamaha now building up a string of victories, their rivals were out to put a halt to the factory team's increasing success on the racetrack, and the Italian Grand Prix at Monza would be memorable in more ways than one. When I arrived at the circuit the day before official practice, I heard this incredible sound. Six-cylinder machine. And somebody came to me, uh, oh, Phil, Honda's have got a six cylinder, it's a 350. I said, no, no, that, that's a 250. They won the 350 championship, and sure enough, for official practice, the green numbers went on. But I think it, it was so, so sensational, not only the sound, but the speed of this, this six cylinder. But Honda sort of kept it up, and they only did like one warm up lap, one flying lap, and finish lap. And then the covers went on it, you know, because the press were all over it. And that was their mistake because in the race, I mean, Jim was gradually drawing ahead and it started to overheat and, uh, and I'd pull him back. I mean, it was sort of overheating. If they'd have done more consistent laps in, in, in practice, they'd have sort of uh, cooled it better and, uh, and not lost the power. Anyway, I won the race that, and the championship, Mike Duff on making the fastest lap on the last lap past Jim and uh, so Yamaha were first and second and Jim on the, this incredible six and it was third. Reed's win at Monza not only gave him the rider's crown but also meant that Yamaha would take a double championship having already sealed off the manufacturer's title. And while Honda introduced a six cylinder machine, Yamaha was busy developing a new factory bike featuring a 250cc V4 engine. In 1965, Yamaha would win eight of the 13 rounds of the World Championship. Reed won the Riders 250 title again, with Yamaha also holding on to their manufacturer's crown. That same year, Reed, at the Isle of Man TT, riding a liquid-cooled version of the two-cylinder RA97, gave Yamaha its first win in the GP125cc class.